be one. Yes. So what was in store for you? Uh, manpower, getting in. You okay? The first day you went and you did realize, did get a glimpse of what was coming through. What went on after that? So I stuck to manpower for a long time. I think I stuck to them for almost four years, and uh, I got a lot of global exposure through them. Traveled a lot. Uh, went to Singapore. Went to many countries through them uh, because manpower is a U.S. based company. So. Uh, they had funds and they were starting up in India. So they wanted people to be trained back home uh, and get the values. So values are very important for any organization. So they wanted their people to live the value of their organization. Uh, so then I grew, I had a team, my team grew with me. Uh, I went to different places. Then after all the places, I decided to settle down in Bangalore. Uh, then I stayed in Bangalore for a couple of years. Uh, do not get scared to leave your family and go uh, because at that stage your career is very important. Uh, I've been the only kid, never even folded a shirt of my own. Uh, and then when I was outside, exposure given to me, I realized how tough it is. Uh, yeah, but I learned. Uh, I learned and I moved forward because I had the choice of either going back home and staying in a very comfortable environment or learning because I knew learning will only give me growth so I decided to uh, learn and grow in life so that probably that was the foundation of what you're right today because uh, I'm just getting the sense that global exposure plus a startup experience you would said your family is entrepreneurial so uh, you, you were inching for that and you would sort of got me your hold to a place absolutely and yeah. all the traveling around yeah, I think you're right. So, so Manpower gave me that and from Manpower, I moved. So, so within HR, uh, so Manpower is a consulting company where uh, they give jobs and they get uh, of their remuneration. There's a fee that they charge. That's how this, it's an industry by itself. Recruitment is an industry. Uh, recruitment exists in every corporate and outside. So they are like the external arm of every corporate. So Manpower was in that business where they made money. Then from here, the next step was to get into a corporate because you've worked in a consulting company, you know how it is. So I went into a corporate. So I joined AB and Ambro in those days and it was a complete different experience. So if I have to give an experience for me, how I felt was for a girl who gets out of her mom's house and gets into her in-laws place. Everything is systematic there. You live like your mother-in-law wants you to wake up at 6.30, so you wake up at 6.30. Uh, your mother-in-law wants you to cook this, so you cook this. Uh, in a corporate, that's what I felt. I felt everything was so process-driven over here. Whereas in manpower, we had to make revenues. Yes. Okay, we were very revenue-driven. While we were process-driven, but revenue, target is what we had to meet. All of a sudden, I moved into an environment which was very process-driven. And that's where I got trained by AB and Ambro that how important process are in life. Everything is related to the process. And uh, yeah, that's that's where I started my journey in AB and Ambro. And then so, so moving from a consulting background to a corporate, it's usually the other way where people feel that like they've been in a corporate and then they can sort of give value, and that's why they want to go probably. Um, uh, a larger end towards giving advice, that consulting bit of it. Yeah. So, where did you feel the need to probably move back or to start uh, my own? You mean? No. Uh, to probably go back to go to AB and Ambro. So that's what I. I mean, like I said, you know, you like you rightly said, you've been in consulting, you've done the advising bit. Now you want to taste the other side. So you go on the corporate side because I've always given people to corporates and I've been talking to corporates on the other side. I've been talking to the head of HR, head of recruitment. So I said, you know, let me go and taste the, how the other side is. And today when I'm getting an opportunity, why not? So a lot of my peers within Manpa moved vertically. You know, they went to parallel organizations and I went to a corporate. So personal choice and everyone makes, not that, my friends were not successful and I was successful or they were very successful, I wasn't. My friends today are also very successful who worked with me at that point of time. And I did my own thing and I just wanted to go on the other side to figure out how it is. And I stayed there for a couple of years, did. 
I was lucky enough to see a merger between AB and Amro and RBS, two big banks merging, processes changing, and I became very, very process oriented working in a bank. Yes. Uh, and that's what I l liked. Today, also, if I feel, if I've reached somewhere in my life, it's because of the processes. So when I go back, uh, when, like, like I said, I've traveled a lot, traveling has given me a lot of exposure. So if you go to Japan, they're very process driven. I mean, everyone knows Japanese guys are very process driven. They are so process driven that if you ever look up to a Japanese, they wear only three color of clothes, white, black, and gray. They do not believe in wasting time. So if you wear a red shirt, you will say I need to either wear a black pant or a white pant and you're wasting some time. So most of the Japanese, if you have been to Japan, they all even look the same. Yeah, I mean, uh, their metabolism is the same, they eat the same food, they dress the same way, everything is same for them. Because they're so process driven. And, and they know that once they start something, they will do it A, B, C, D, come to Z. They will not jump. And I think that's where Japan is, where Japan is. And again, like I spoke in the beginning of our discussion about attitude, if you look at Japan, attitude matters for them. Hiroshima, Nagasaki, you know, whatever happened with them, earthquakes, every now and then something happening, being the most expensive city in the world, but they move forward. They never sulk. They never go to an America. They never go to an Australia. They never come to an India saying that I need help. They try and do everything by themselves. The kid needs to join army because they said tomorrow if we need people, we have in-house. So they're very process driven. And that's what I learned back that how important processes are. I think HR is always very process driven. And then while uh, then I did my management also because I realized that uh, I have to do my MBA. Uh, like I said, you know, I was a very average student. Uh, I always had this fear that, oh God, I don't think I can do my MBA. I, I don't think I can pass my management. Uh, but with time, I realized that uh, management is slightly important because whatever you learn in management, again, I said, later in your life, you realize that. And uh, MBA did help me. So I did my uh, master's from NMIMS and uh, then I moved on in life. You know, interestingly, I do have one, uh, but it's not in my office. Yes. Uh, you know, I choose to keep the Xavier's one in my office, but uh, I do have an NMIMS uh, hoodie too. And uh, yeah, so then I did NMIMS uh, management and I moved forward. It did help me a lot. And uh, from there, there is something called as RPO within recruitment. It's a terminology called RPO. It's called recruitment process outsourcing. And uh, so I did my consulting. Now strategy got into me, okay? So every move now was strategic. So I changed my job every three to four years because uh, every year I would get a 10% hike minimum. Uh, so if I stay there for three years, I would get a 30% hike for three years. In the third year, again, I would change my job because then I would ask for a 30% hike. So in three years, I've got a 60% hike now. So now I had become very strategic in my moves. So I would change my job. Uh, I did that, but a lot of my colleagues didn't do that because they got 20, 30% and they were very content. Uh, my aspiration grew from here. I changed jobs and I started, uh, I decided to get into an RPO uh, because now I knew consulting, which is manpower. I knew corporate, which was uh, ABN Ambro RBS and I needed to know RPO. So RPO is nothing but, uh, for example, you have people in your organization, you pay them money, you pay them bonus. Uh, if they leave, it's your job to recruit them, but you're not here to do that. You're here at a management level to grow your organization. So that does suck up some part of your time. But let's say you have funds with you, you have an investor who's ready to invest with you. So what do you do? You outsource that entire manpower piece to a X company. And you come to a company like ours and you say, hey, you know what? I need five people from you. I will give you X salary plus a commission. Uh, but the dealers, if this guy leaves, you have to get me a replacement tomorrow morning. So my, f my function is running smooth and I don't have a gap when anyone leaves. I don't have to worry about handholding and you know handovers. 
all that is my responsibility and I charge you money for that right so that's what RPO is all about in uh, most banks and companies so then I got into an RPO uh, and I worked there for a year and a half and then decided to start 7th Edge.